The next leg of the FARC Low Dollar Series Championship sees four straight races in the state of Illinois, starting with the Arnold Pine Auto Sales 100 at the Illinois State Fairgrounds. Timothy Ruiz took the prolapse pole over Billy Bob Childers, leading them down into turn one. Kenny George making it three wide in the second row. Childers pulling ahead around the outside. Ruiz not off to a very good start, it looks like. He's gonna get swallowed up by the pack behind him. Childers comes under attack from his teammate, Jim Kidd, but Kenny George makes it three wide to take the lead for himself. And by lap 10, he has already increased his lead to well over half a straightaway. Points leader Billy Ray Smith Thompson not faring so well at the start of this race. He pulls in with overheating issues. He's gonna come back out one lap down after getting a ton of mud cleared from his grill. Packer Carroll runs over Aaron Coltier for 10th to bring out the first caution. Carroll not winning himself too many friends at the start of this one. Your race leader has been bitten by mechanical problems. Kenny George brings the car into the pits with one lap before the restart. This hands the lead over to Roy Warren, but he's got his hands full with Billy Ray Smith Thompson trying to get his lap back. Bob Steffens in the seven, hounding him for second. But Warren gets away and eventually puts a lap on Kenny George. Looks like George may have dropped a cylinder, and that's ruined a very promising start to his race. Lawrence Burr is back in the 64 this week, trying to hold off Riley Durbin for fifth. He's off to a much better start than his last run at 70-77 Speedway, where he crashed on lap 17. The son of John Burr has made a home for himself this year over in the Voltrox Mudstars Dirt Light Models, where he has a handful of feature wins. And his fellow competitor in that series, Ali Riggs, blows an engine and brings out the next yellow, getting hit by Billy Ray Smith Thompson. Roy Warren, after taking the caution, spins himself up into the wall. He gets back going and reclaims his spot in line before a round of pit stops, but the repairs that the 86 crew had to do will set him back to fifth. This hands the lead over to Lawrence Burr as we approach halfway with second place in points. Zach Webster in pursuit. Lev Azarov in the 82 is a lap down. But now here we have Archer Helms racing Eric Cardona a little too hard for 21st and backing himself into the wall. And once again, our race leader has to make an unscheduled stop. Lawrence Burr experiencing overheating issues. So he's going to have to fall to the back after getting his grill cleaned off. Zach Webster takes over the lead, but he's going to get shoved into the wall by Lev Azarov. Kevin Monroe and Chuck Johnson all trying to get their laps back at once. But fortunately for Webster, none of his rivals are able to take advantage just yet. Bob Steffens currently runs second, but he's going to face a challenge by Billy Bob Childers, who gets by him even while riding behind the lap car of Kelly Splison. And now we've got a caution as Taylor Brillen, running seventh, spins into the wall all by herself and narrowly avoids some big hits by Eric Cardona and Greg Gray. Nonetheless, this is a very disappointing development for Motor Assault Racing, which was having their best run of the year. And now disaster strikes Zach Webster as he pulls to the inside and will limp his way to the pits, never to return to the track. Webster, again, was running second in points coming into this race hoping to take advantage of Billy Ray Smith Thompson's early setback, but now this hands the lead over to Billy Bob Childers, who's probably got his fingers crossed at this point with how this race has been faring for the leaders. Todd Stater runs second. He qualified 13th and is now trying to hold off Jim Kidd. Monica Rook is fourth until Flip Popdopoulos gets into her after a late restart, sending her up into the wall. Rook gets back going again, but that's going to take away her chances for her first top five since Duluth. Jim Kidd and Todd Stater still fighting for a second. Stater gets around him as the lapped cars shove Kidd to the outside. Kevin Monroe fell a lap down, but got his lap back. And now he's making great use of that opportunity, running in fourth place. Bob Steffens right behind him, spins into the wall in turn three bringing out a caution with just 15 laps to go, but that's not going to be a problem for Billy Bob Childers as he pulls away from Todd Stater and claims his second win of the year. 14 cars finished on the lead lap. Lawrence Burr was the last of them, and pole sitter Timothy Ruiz was the first car one lap down. Kevin Monroe was third in points coming into today's race and made some gains 
on uh, Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Zach Webster. Packer Carroll matched his best finish of the season for the third time. He also finished fifth at Langhorn and Road America. Riley Durbin sixth, Greg Gray seventh, Danica Hollifield eighth, Roy Warren ninth, and Monica Rook rounds out the top ten. Next, we head up to the Chicago Motor Speedway for the Erratic Cab 100. Chuck Johnson took the prolapse pull over MJ Racing teammates Johnson Clapp and Austin Howard, but he washes up the track in one and two. Here comes Johnson Clapp going for the lead in MJ's home race. Austin Howard, however, was not so lucky as he quickly starts to drop through the field. He's down to 16th by lap five. Chuck Johnson fell back as well and now falls victim to Packer Carroll's tried and true strategy of running over somebody early in the race. A pileup ensues out of turn two that sees Kenny George almost getting onto his roof. Kenny George and Austin Howard have nowhere to go and Roy Warren helps the 50 onto its side. But despite all the carnage here, Kenny George was the only car to drop out of the race. Chuck Johnson escaped with nothing more than a few scratches, luckily, and it didn't take him long to get back into the top 10. And now on lap 38, he has chased down race leader Johnson Clapp, but they've got a trio of lapped cars to negotiate with. Johnson simply picks Joshua Pacer, the fastest of the three lapped cars, and takes over the top spot. Running a distant third is Timothy Ruiz with Bob Steffens in pursuit. Here comes Steffens to the inside of the 112, but they take the yellow and Ruiz keeps third. And the caution was for Billy Ray Smith Thompson once again getting into trouble as he gets together with Hunter Blaze backing both cars into the wall. It hasn't been a good first half of the race for Smith Thompson. He qualified fifth, but quickly fell back to around 15th. Johnson Clapp takes the lead back after a round of pit stops and to add insult to injury, Chuck Johnson has to come back into the pits after the restart. It turns out that the dominant car of the first half has dropped a cylinder. Meanwhile, Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Roy Warren have not only recovered, but they've gotten faster after their, let's call them unwanted adjustments. Smith Thompson has finally gotten back into the top 10 and Warren is following him. On the other hand, Chuck Johnson has now gone a lap down to Johnson Clapp. But with so many cars having gone a lap down earlier in the race, he can still salvage a top 20. Bob Steffens runs second, uh, quite a bit behind the 64. Timothy Ruiz has fallen back a little as well after poking around in the top five early on in the race. He's still running 10th, but he's trying to hold off Alexa Lake for that spot. Kevin Monroe runs fifth in one of two home races for himself and M&J Racing, the other being the Meadowdale Road Course up north in Carpentersville, Illinois. Monroe is still winless in his final year of full-time park competition, but despite that, he is still very involved in the championship fight. More problems for Hunter Blaze as his car breaks down just past the pit entrance, so he's going to park on the inside of the front stretch and bring out a caution coming to lap 75. 20 laps to go now, it looks just like the start of the race, with so many cars a lap down at this point. Johnson Clapp makes a clean getaway, Bob Steffens running second, gets trapped behind the 79 of Silas White. But one lap later, White tangles with Chuck Johnson, setting off another pileup out of turn four. Billy Ray Smith Thompson gets into another wreck after working his way up to fourth. He gets away, and even though he was plenty fast after his first wreck, I don't think that car is going to quite be the same after this. And now your race leader is in trouble. Johnson Clapp has a tire go down after the restart. It looks like he may have run over some debris on the front stretch, so Clapp is forced to pit after leading 78 laps, but a crash breaks out behind him. So that's gonna save Clapp from going a lap down. Wow, Billy Ray Smith Thompson must really hate phone companies as he turns around the Aratel car of Yevgeny Kuznetsov. And of course he got together with the protocol car driven by uh, Hunter Blaze earlier in the race. The race will restart with just eight laps to go. Bob Steffens is now the leader. The lapped car of Kelly Splison is in between him and Kevin Monroe but Monroe is gonna fall into the clutches of Lev Azarov and lose second place. However, Bob Steffens remains unchallenged over the final laps, and he cruises to the win here in Chicago, his second win of the year. Packer Carroll's early race rampage strategy seems to be working for him as he beats his uh, best finish with a third place result today. 
Kevin Monroe finishes fourth once again. Billy Bob Childers follows up his Springfield victory with a fifth. Alexa Lake continues to prove that she is a force to be reckoned with despite her limited schedule with a sixth. Zach Webster bounces back to finish seventh. Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Roy Warren finish eighth and ninth with their damaged cars. And Johnson Clapp rounds out the top ten. Last car on the lead lap. Next, we head back to Southern Illinois to the Decoin State Fairgrounds for the fourth and final race of the Master Spark Four Crown series of double points races, the C9 Antifreeze 99. Lev Azarov keeps up the momentum with the Prolapse Pole Award, and the pole bonus is doubled as well. So now Azarov has 40 points up on everyone else at the start of this race, but here comes Billy Bob Childers around the outside. He is going to take the early lead with Roy Warren in pursuit. And Warren wastes no time in trying to grab the lead for himself on lap two, but he hits the wall coming off of turn four. Childers comes back after him, but the two of them make contact going into turn one. And then a few laps later, they get together again. Patience doesn't seem to be a high priority for the rookie Roy Warren. And he's going to lose this battle anyway as he gets stuck behind the 65 of Chuck Nags. Childers sails out to the lead with his teammate Jim Kidd in tow. The dirt tracks are still not playing very nicely with Zach Webster as he comes into the pits on lap 8 with an overheating issue. He's going to lose a lap. And it seems that Roy Warren's strategy of banging doors with Billy Bob Childers has cut down one of his tires. So now he's going to pit and lose a lap getting that tire changed. Meanwhile, Chuck Johnson has driven all the way up from his 17th place starting spot to make a bid for the lead. And he would remain the fastest car on the track long after clearing Billy Bob Childers, opening up a straightaways lead by lap 25. But the caution would be brought out by part three in the Packer Carroll Wrecking Ball Saga, with Rick Forrest playing the victim of the week. This battle was for 14th place, and here comes Chuck Johnson to put a lap on the both of them. That just shows you how fast Chuck Johnson's been. He's already put a lap on about half the field. But while Chuck Johnson may have checked out, the battle for second is still on as Johnson Clapp makes it stick around the outside of Jim Kidd. And now it's deja vu as the 46 and 64 are 1 2 once again. Lap 55, Harry Asanola and Todd Stater get together to bring out another yellow. And Chuck Johnson's engine goes as he leads the field around to 1 to go. It is absolute agony for Johnson and his fans, while bystanders and his critics are just calling this business as usual. Now we're well past halfway. Is he going to finish further up the field thanks to attrition? Nope. Turns out Chuck Johnson is the very first car to drop out of the race, which will be extra devastating for his championship efforts in this double points race. But this means Johnson Clapp will take control of the lead, while Jim Kidd and Billy Ray Smith Thompson rub fenders for second, trying to clear all the lapped cars before they wreck themselves like Dan Miato and Harry Asinola do. Kelly Splison decides to join in the fun too, sending Miato for a ride. After the restart, Hunter Blaze, running 10th, gets together with the lapped car of Eric Cardona. Coming to 20 laps to go, the battle for the lead is on between Johnson Clapp and Billy Ray Smith Thompson. Bull sitter Lev Azarov has found some speed once again and takes advantage of Chuck Nags' interference to take third from Billy Bob Childers. Timothy Ruiz has made his way up to fifth and looks to chase down the 16. But the race would be interrupted once again. Taylor Brillen gets into the back of Liam O'Connor spinning herself up into the wall. She was running 23rd a lap down, so not a great day for the C9 antifreeze machine in the race that they are sponsoring. And now Eric Cardona and Ellie Riggs have come together. John Burr comes flying in. A huge hit and a wild ride for the 23 car. Here's another look at it. John Burr had a lot of room up on the outside to get around this, but chose the bottom for some reason. Cardona and Burr would climb out of their cars, and we would get a two-lap shootout. Billy Ray Smith Thompson hounding Johnson Clapp, looking for a second double points win this season. But Clapp pulls away and takes the C9 Antifreeze 99, continuing our streak of drivers getting their second wins of the year. Johnson Clapp, the part-timer, comes home with a whopping 230 points, something that I'm sure the series regulars are quite envious of, especially Billy Ray Smith Thompson, who led by 75 points coming into this stretch of races. 
Lev Azarov comes home third, outscoring Billy Ray Smith Thompson with his pull bonus. And once again, Kevin Monroe finishes fourth, Billy Bob Childers finishes fifth. And rounding out the top ten is Austin Howard, so that puts all three Emma J cars in this race in the top ten. And now we wrap up the Illinois Tour with the Matson Racing 100 at the winding Meadowdale Raceway in Carpentersville. The Prolapse Pull Award went to Mariano Zavallo, returning to his role as M&J Racing's road course specialist. In fact, four of the top five spots were taken by what I'd call road ringers, uh, Riley Knight, Lucas Sweeney, and uh, Winston Orwell, the other three. But as you just saw, Zavala dropped back quickly, leaving the battle for the lead between Riley Knight and Jim Kidd. Knight takes over the lead, Winston Orwell moves up to second at the end of the first lap. Lap two, we get our first caution. Riley Knight slides up into the 64 of Jimmy Russell, sending Russell up into the wall and almost into the path of Danica Hollifield. He was able to get going quickly, so I'm not sure why they threw the yellow, but then again, there isn't a whole lot of runoff in that section. Winston Orwell and Lucas Sweeney take over the top two spots, heading off of Pitt Road, but Sweeney and Riley Knight pounce on the restart, dueling for the lead among themselves. Now we've seen this a lot before, Cars 8 and 08 battling for the lead on a road course, but they've both had a nasty habit of running into issues, lots of them of their own doing. So hopefully they'll keep it clean today as we see Lev Azarov hitting the pits uh, after the restart with some damage on the right hand side. Azarov wrecked his car in qualifying, started last and had made his way up to 8th before having to pit again. Roy Warren gets into the back of Billy Ray Smith Thompson, and this is going to bring out our second caution as Billy Bob Childers, Monica Rook, and Rick Forrest are all collected as well. But this is good news for Lev Azarov, who leapfrogs everybody in the pits to take over the lead. Tristan Kristoff on the same strategy, moves up to fourth in the AJ Young car, but he quickly gets swarmed on the restart. Meanwhile, Mariana Zavala gets a great run down the long, hilly front stretch taking the lead from Lev Azarov and hoping to keep it for more than a few seconds this time. Lap 15, Monica Rook's day comes to an end by hitting the wall and then getting clobbered by Timothy Ruiz. At the same time, Jim Kidd comes to a stop on the front stretch. His car broke down right after the pit entrance. Mariano Zavala pits from the lead. Lev Azarov is going to follow him in. Not too many takers this time, so they're going to fall pretty deep into the field. Winston Orwell, the GT racer from New England, leads on the restart over Lucas Sweeney, who almost slides right into him, challenging for the lead. Riley Knight sits third, but not for long. Here comes Mariano Zavala on much fresher tires than most of the field, and he's taken advantage of that for all it's worth by flying up through the field. Sweeney and Orwell have got to be a bit nervous at this point. Here's Mark Thompson running a very respectable 23rd at his latest home, Dale Plow Racing. There he goes by the 17 of Hunter Blaze, who's experiencing a problem. Thompson unfortunately lost his quest to make every race this year no matter what, after failing to qualify for Chicago and DuCoin. But it's good to see that he's still chugging as we have a battle for the lead. This was pretty inevitable with how fast Mariano Zavala's been. Sweeney did not stand a chance on those older tires. Lev Azarov is on the same strategy as Zavala, therefore his tires are equally as fresh, and while he isn't quite as fast, he's also gained a lot of positions over this last run, as he now takes fourth from Riley Knight. But David Bloom brings out a late caution, almost flipping over in front of the race leader. This is not what Zavala wanted to see, as he now has to hold off his rivals for a two-lap shootout, but he gets a great jump over Lucas Sweeney, who is now in danger of losing second to Winston Orwell, and here comes Lev Azarov, who I'm sure was happy to see that yellow because now it gives him the opportunity to pounce on two cars at once and take over the second spot. But he's not going to have the time to catch Mariano Zavala, who comes off the final corner and takes the win here at Meadowdale. Zavala scored a perfect 135 points by winning the pole and leading the most laps. Winston Orwell grabs his best finish of the season after his previous two appearances were busts. Lucas Sweeney, Chuck Johnson, and Riley Knight finally have a race go right for them. 
Johnson, Steffens, Monroe, and Webster make big gains on their championship rival, Billy Ray Smith Thompson, and Kenny George rounds out the top 10. And now looking at the point standings, Smith Thompson's lead is down to 21 over Lev Azarov. Those two have been on fire during the second half of the season, and I guarantee you Chuck Johnson would be up in that fight as well had his car held out more often. Rick Forrest's season has really fallen to pieces as well. He finished first and third in the first two double points races, but he failed to qualify for a race, and the last three races he's finished outside the top 15. It's looking like Smith Thompson, Azarov, and Monroe are going to be our serious contenders for the championship, while Hunter Blaze and Roy Warren fight for the Rookie of the Year title. Next time, we will find out who the finalists will be entering Rockford, starting with the Lone Pros 100 at the Oswego Speedway in New York State. And as always, you can catch the highlights right here on the Fark Racing Network.